If you're watching this on Moodle or floated by on YouTube, a very warm welcome. My name is Rory Lees Oaks and in this presentation we're going to look at Bowlby's attachment theory. A little bit about John Bowlby. He was born February the 26th, 1907 in London and he died September the 2nd in 1990, age 83, in the Isle of Skye in Scotland. He was British by nationality, his fields were psychiatry, his influences were Sigmund Freud, Melanie Klein and Conrad Lorenz. He coined the term attachment and his key idea was attachment theory. So what is attachment? Well, attachment can be defined as a unique emotional bond between carer and child that involves an exchange of comfort, care and pleasure. The roots of research on attachment began with Freud's theories about love. However, John Bowlby's research usually credits him as the father of attachment. Bowlby described it as a lasting psychological connectedness between human beings. Bowlby shared the psychoanalytic view that early experiences in childhood have an important influence on development and behaviour in later life. Our early attachment styles are established in childhood through the infant caregiver relationship. Bowlby believed that attachments had a basis in evolution. He wrote, the pro propensity to make strong emotional bonds to particular individuals is a basic component of human nature. He effectively, effectively believed it was a human given, that attachment was something that was biologically built into us. So we're going to have a look at the characteristics of attachment and there's four major ideas in attachment. One's called proximity maintenance, the other's safe haven, secure base and separation distress and I'm going to just explain a little bit about those in the next slide. Proximity maintenance is the desire to be near the people we're attached to and we see this in children don't we? If a a caregiver or a parent strays a little too far away from a child they tend to um, want to come back to the caregiver. Safe haven is returning to the attachment figure for comfort, comfort, safety in the face of fear or threat. So if something scares or frightens a child they're more likely to run to the caregiver or parent. Secure base. The attachment figure acts as a base of security from which the child can explore the surrounding environment. So children run off to explore their world and, and make their world bigger, but they always come back to the carer or parent. Um, afterwards, they, they come back to um, a secure base. And finally, separation distress, anxiety that occurs in the absence of an attachment figure. And we see that sometimes if parents leave a child in a room and then just go out, once the child has cottoned on to the fact that the caregiver or parent isn't there, they can get sometimes anxious or, or distressed. So let's have a look at the type of attachments that Bowlby talked about. Well, the first one is called secure attachment. The second he called ambivalent attachment. Then he went on to coin the phrase avoidant attachment. And finally, disorganised attachment. And as the presentation moves forward I'm going to be expanding on these ideas. So the characteristics of a secure attachment um, is as children we're able to separate from parents and that leaves us as adults of having lasting trusting relationships. Um, when parents return we're met with positive emotions and that leads as the theory would tell us to be in adult life comfortable sharing feelings with friends and partners. But this all bases on the caregiver's behaviour. So let's have a look at what the caregiver has to do to promote what we call a secure attachment. Well, the caregiver responds appropriately and promptly and as consistently to the needs of the child. The caregiver has successfully formed a secure parental attachment bond to the child. So this is about responding appropriately to the child and is consistent to the child's needs. However, some caregiver styles aren't like this and we get different forms of attachments. So we're going to have a look at the next one, which is called ambivalent attachment. And 
As children, if we have an ambivalent attachment, we may be wary of strangers and we could be reluctant in adult life to become close to others. Um, as children, we become greatly distressed when the parent leaves and that might be that as adults we worry their par partner does not love them. So let's have a look at the caregiver behaviour that would generate ambivalent attachment in an adult in later life. Well, ambivalent attachment is where the caregiver gives little or no response to a distressed child, discourages crying and encourages independence. And that is the basis for ambivalent attachment. Then we move on to avoidance attachment and as children we may avoid our parents which might mean as adults we have problems with intimacy we don't seek much comfort or contact from parents and it might be as adults we invest little emotion in social or romantic relationships as children we may show little or no preference between a parent and a stranger and that might lead us um, as adults that we're unable or unwilling to share thoughts and feelings with others so the caregiver behaviour that to generate avoidance attachment in a child is inconsistent between appropriate and neglectful responses and generally will only respond after increased attachment behaviour from the infant. A good example of this may be a carer or a parent who is just ignoring a child until the child is literally begging for some kind of care, chases the caregiver around if they're, if they're able to, if the child can walk. Um, and that would generate avoidant attachment, the idea that they're being avoided. And finally, disorganised attachment. Um, now this usually um, is generated where there's a very difficult parenting style or caregiving style, where it's completely really broken down. And at the age of one, a child can show a mixture of avoidant and resistant behaviours, won't want to do things, avoids doing things. They may seem dazed, confused or apprehensive. And at age six, they may be taking on parental role and some children act as a caregiver to all the parents. So let's have a look at that caregiver's behaviour that generates a disorganised attachment in a child. Well, sadly, it can be that the caregiver is, is either very frightened themselves or they generate frightening behaviour. They're intrusive, they're withdrawn, there's lots of negativity around. There's role confusion and this can be where a child takes on the adult or parenting role to the adult and this does happen um, sadly um, there's communication errors and maltreatment and it's very often associated when it, with many forms of abuse towards children so children who've had um, some children who've had child abuse have been abused as children can have what they call disorganized attachment there is a critique of Bowlby's ideas and it goes back to the time that Bowlby was asked to develop his ideas and after World War II the United Nations were faced with many dispossessed and orphaned children and they asked Bowlby to write a pamphlet on the matter and he went on to formulate his theory that children need to form an attachment with at least one primary caregiver to have a healthy attachment or a secure attachment. Bowlby's views idolised motherhood. One of the criticisms about Bowlby is that his, his, his views idolised motherhood and traditional family life. And governments of the time used some of his ideas to justify the closure of nursery provision. Thus, women who had worked in male occupations during the war were forced back into the home. During the Second World War, women did a lot of work, which in those times was traditionally men's work. And... Um, some of the more cynical or conspiracy theory ideas behind Bowlby's theories being used by the government was that um, the government didn't want lots of men who'd come back from the war not in jobs so they kind of shamed women back to the homes um, and it's, a very, it's still a very strong feminist argument against Bowlby's ideas. To balance this, well well, acknowledging this, many contemporary practitioners in development psychology and psychotherapy still consider Bowlby's ideas relevant. And certainly in psychotherapy, um, there are therapies which focus on attachment theory uh, as the formulation for clients understanding their own uh, behaviours in adulthood. And if you want to do any other 
any further research, um, have a look at Schaefer and Emerson's ideas. They expanded on Bowlby's ideas in the 60s. And I'm going to attach a link to the YouTube site and to the, the Moodle site so that you can just have a look at that and get a more rounded view of attachment. If you want further information, well, if you're watching on Moodle, click the resource tab here. And if you click that, it will take you to a website with lots of really informa interesting information about um, not only Bowlby, but also Schaefer and Emerson and other thinkers in the field of attachment theory. Or if you're watching on YouTube, if you click in the box below the video, I'll put a link in and you can click straight off the YouTube site. And finally, thank you for watching.